This series of video is about disorder of pigmentation and melanocytes. Particularly this video is about melanoma. These are the references for this video. The melanoma is the malignant tumor of melanocyte and it is synonymous with malignant melanoma. Melanoma is most deadly among the tumors of the skin. Although it is not a common tumor type overall, but it is a leading cause of the cancer mortality in young adult. It is rare in adolescents and extremely rare in childhood. Melanoma is associated with exposure to ultraviolet radiation in sunlight and the sites for the development of these melanoma are skin, oral and anogenital mucosa surface, that is oropharynx, gastrointestinal and genitourinary tract, the esophagus, meninges, and the uvea of the eye. The incidence of melanoma is increasing and it is estimated that over 1% of the children born today will develop malignant melanoma. Prognosis of most uh, melanoma is good if recognized and excised early as there are two phases of growth of melanoma, the horizontal and vertical phases. Good, good prognosis for the melanoma is linked with the detection before entering into the vertical phase. Due to increased public awareness about the signs of the melanoma, they are recognized and excised early in their course. The death rate due to melanoma has also decreased due to introduction of immune checkpoint inhibitors as a treatment modality. Some cases of melanoma are familial and uh, they are present as autosomal dominant trait with uh, variable uh, penetrance in 10 to 15 percent of the cases and uh, there is uh, there is mutation in the gene that regulate cell cycle progression or germline mutations that affect telomerase expression. The other cases are spor sporadic and they are associated with ultraviolet ex radiation exposure from the sunlight. There is ultraviolet uh, light exposure that leads to DNA damage and over the time there is uh, uh, accumulation of mutation as the repair mechanism of the DNA is impaired and as a result when we examine the DNA it will show point mutation. It uh, occurs on the sun exposed surfaces especially in the back uh, of the man and in female in the on the back and on the legs. And uh, it is more common in lightly pigmented individual as compared to the darkly pigmented skin. So in lightly pigmented individuals, there is decreased melanin production in the skin that predisposes the skin DNA to increase damage from the sunlight. It is also stated in some studies that sunburns early in the life are associated with the melanoma. Melanoma sometimes also occur in dark skinned individuals and at sites that are not exposed to the sun. So sunlight is not always an essential predisposing factors and some other environmental factor also play their part in the development of the melanoma. The frequent driver mutation that are uh, that are related with melanoma uh, disturb cell cycle control, pro-growth pathways and telomerase activity. The disruption of the cell cycle control is seen in sporadic melanoma and uh, this cyclin dependent kinase uh, inhibitor 2A gene is, is responsible for encoding P15, 16 and ARF. These are the tumor suppressors 
and they have got inhibitory effect on cyclin dependent kinase 4 and cyclin dependent kinase 6 and uh, due to this inhibitory effect the cell cycle is blocked in the G1 phase of the G1 phase through the RB. Uh, ARF is especially uh, associated with some uh, experimental studies with melanoma and this ARF increases the availability of P53 because it binds with MDM2. P53 is a, a tumor suppressor gene and MDM2 has got effect that uh, destroys P53. So ARF keep MDM2 engaged and P53 is released to act as tumor suppressor gene and uh, this uh, cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor to a gene it is mutated in 40 percent of pedigrees with autosomal dominant familial melanoma so final uh, result as the mutation of cyclin dependent kinase inhibitor to a gene is escape from oncogene induced cellular senescence which result in this uh, uh, this blockage inactivity or this blockage is now unblocked and the cyclin dependent kinases are more available for the proliferative activities of the melanocyte. This uh, illustration is showing the rest signaling pathway with its uh, two arms after the activation by the growth factor and the receptor uh, tyrosine kinase activity there are underlying two arm one is the phosphoinositrol 3 kinase and then another is the BRAF pathway and through involvement of various gene and uh, uh, proteins they are responsible for survival and proliferation of the melanocyte. The BRAF mutation is seen in 40 to 50 percent melanoma while RAS mutation is seen in uh, 15 to 20 percent of the melanoma. The B cases that have shown the BRAF mutation are also associated with P10 mutation that results in more activity downstream activity of uh, serine threonine pathway and increased survival of the cells. The melanoma cases that are associated uh, with the non sun exposed cutaneous lesions are due to receptor tyrosine kinase mutation and uh, this receptor tyrosine kinase sits above both these arms and it is responsible uh, though the mechanism is unknown it is responsible for the uh, non-sun exposed cutaneous melanoma 20 percent of these uh, non-sun exposed cutaneous melanomas are also associated with p10 silencing neurofibromin 1 neurofibromin uh, fibromin 1 that is a tumor suppressor gene is a negative regulator of ras so its uh, mutation also lead to the development of melanoma through increased proliferation and survival of the cell. The In human cells, the replicative senescence is largely due to attrition of uh, telomeres. There, uh, these uh, telomeres are series of short repetitive nucleotide sequence at the three end of chromosome and uh, these are for uh, humans these are TTAGGG. DNA polymerase is an enzyme that is responsible for replication of DNA. It begins its activity at five end of the DNA strand and works toward three and this enzyme cannot copy linear chromosome down to their end hence telomeres shorten with each replication 
These telomeres protect the gene that are located near the end uh, from being lost by repeated cell division. Hmm. Some cell like stem cells express telomerase enzyme that restore the sequence lost during the replication and thus stabilize the length of their telomeres. Most somatic cells, they do not express sufficient telomeres. Uh, they do not express sufficient telomerase enzyme to control their length. So telomere shorten with every cell division. Therefore, these uh, telomeres serves as mitotic clock for the cell and this mitotic clock gives clue about mitotic events that have occurred. Some cell injury like uh, oxidative stress directly damage DNA telomeres uh, independent of uh, the cell division. Telomeres are normally protected by sheltering and when telomeres are critically short enough or damaged, the sheltering is released and telomeres are exposed and DNA damage response is triggered and this response causes irreversible cell cycle arrest or apoptosis. This attrition of telomere can also lead to end-to-end -end fusion of the chromosome and other forms of genomic instability that can lead to malignant transformation. The other injuries that are responsible for senescence are excessive mitogen stimulation like that seen in activated oncogenes and chromatin disruption. The senescence can be reverted by adding telomerase as proved in laboratory and uh, the reactivation of telomerase is seen in melanoma and third gene that is a gene that encode the catalytic subunit of the telomerase is uh, mutated in 70% of the melanoma cases. So there is increased third expression in melanoma that leads to evasion from senescence. This uh, diagram we have seen earlier and uh, this is uh, showing that receptor kino tyrosine kinase activity and uh, there is downstream activation of RAS and RAS have got two components. One is phosphoinositol 3 kinase pathway and another is BRAF signaling pathway and through the uh, action of various uh, components there is increased survival and proliferation of the uh, melanocytes. The components that are activate that are being targeted by the drugs specific drugs are indicated by these uh, red alphabets. So we can summarize the risk factors for the development of melanoma. These are uh, presence of genetic markers such as uh, CDKN2 A and BRAF and other we have discussed. Uh, photo skin type 1 and 2, family history of dysplastic nevi or melanoma, personal history of melanoma, ultraviolet radiation, particularly sunburn during childhood and in uh, intermittent uh, burning exposures, number more than 50 and size more than 5 of melanocytic nevi and uh, congenital nevi, especially if these are large and number of dysplastic nevi if more than five in number and dysplastic melanocytic nervous syndrome.
Grossly, the melanoma show variation in color. They are black, brown, red, dark blue, and gray in color. They uh, show zones of white or flesh colored hypopigmentation and these are due to focal regression of the tumor and uh, borders of these melanoma are irregular and often these borders are notched as compared to the regular borders of the nevi. Melanoma progresses through two major stages. One is radial growth phase. In this uh, the lesion is spread along the radii of an uh, imperfect circle in the skin but remains superficial and thin and it is measured by micrometry uh, and the method is described by Breslow. While the vertical growth phase is uh, a focal area in which the lesion expands in more or less a spherical manner to form a tumor mass and the Breslow thickness is increased. This is the gross appearance of the radial growth phase of a malignant melanoma. This is superficially spreading and the largest diameter is 1.8 cm. In the radial growth phase of the melanoma, the tumor cells are large pigmented epithelioid melanocytes and they are dispersed in nest and as individual cells and scattered throughout the thickness of the epidermis. Hence, these are termed as pegetoid scatter. The melanocytes may be limited to the epidermis and this is termed as melanoma in situ. However, in lentiginous form of the melanoma, uh, they are scattered along the basement, bas basal layer of the epidermis both in the uh, lentiginous form of the melanoma and in nevi also. They are uh, aggregated, uh, they are scattered along the basement, uh, sorry, along the basal layer of the epidermis. Then they, these uh, melanocytes may invade into the papillary dermis. They grow in each direction uh, evenly. They go upward in the epidermis in the dermis if uh, they invade and they also grow in each direction peripherally. So these uh, uh, there are many single or nests of the cell but no nest has got growth pre uh, preference over other nest and they go grow evenly in all directions. Mitosis is uh, not present in dermal melanocyte while epidermal melanocyte may show mitosis. There is presence of brisk inflammatory infiltrate with uh, the within this tumor and uh, metastasis is rare. So the radial growth of the melanoma means horizontal spread of the tumor cell within the epidermis and superficial dermis and they do not metastasize. Uh, the clinical pathological classes of these uh, tumors are lentigo malignant, that is an indolent lesion of the face of older men that remain in the radial growth phase for several decades. The superficial spreading melanoma that is the most common variety and uh, it involves sun exposed skin while the acral mucosal lentiginous melanoma is not related to sun exposure. This photomicrograph is showing the uh, melanoma in radial growth phase and there is presence of irregular nest and single cell that uh, are growing uh, and uh, these are present within the epidermis and underlying inflammatory response, brisk inflammatory response is present in the dermis. The character of the growth begins to change after some time and uh, this is usually one to two years and uh, there is increased mitotic activity both in the epidermis and in the dermal component 
and the tumor grows as expanding spheroid mass in the dermis. This is termed as vertical growth phase of melanoma and the net direction of the growth phase tend to be perpendicular to that of radial growth phase. This uh, photograph, gross, gross picture is showing the both the vertical and horizontal uh, growth phases. The flat area is the horizontal growth phase while these nodular areas one black colored and two pinkish nodular areas are showing the vertical growth phase of melanoma. This illustration is showing a vertical growth phase that has evolved uh, in uh, melanoma after the radial growth phase. The thickness of the lesion is uh, measured from the superficial uh, reticular layer at its thickest point down to the uh, the lowest border of the melanoma cells at the point of deepest invasion and uh, the vertical uh, growth phase is uh, perpendicular to that of radial growth phase then the characteristics of the vertical growth phase melanoma are the tumor cell nest larger than the radial growth and they invade uh, both direction the uh, radial and as well as vertical but more growth is in the vertical direction then this is termed as tumorogenicity is clearly there are some tumor nests that have got uh, growth preference against another groups of the tumor cells mitotic figures are common in uh, these uh, vertical growth phase and the, this is one of the uh, defining attribute of the melanoma Cell cycle progression markers are increased such as key 67. They are increased in uh, vertical growth phase and phosphohistone uh, markers that are the markers of mitosis are also increased in the vertical growth phase. The melanoma cell tend to look different from the radial growth phase as these cells do not contain pigment or have little pigment only as compared to the radial growth phase that has got abundant uh, melanin pigment. The tumor cells in the vertical phase they come up to the or they invade up to the reticular dermis. The host response uh, the, there is absent or reduced lymphocyte in the radial phase there was uh, there was presence of brisk inflammatory response but in vertical phase of the melanoma the host response uh, as a, uh, there is absent reduced uh, absent or reduced lymphocyte and uh, it is important to know that uh, not all vertical phase uh, melanoma metastasize especially the melanoma that are less than one millimeter thick and they lack mitosis they rarely metastasize this photomicrograph is showing the histopathological features of melanoma the superficial spreading type in which a vertical growth phase has developed here this uh, tumor spheroid nodule has uh, uh, got a clear growth advantage over this aggregate of the tumor cells. So this is the vertical growth phase that has developed in a superficially spreading type of the melanoma. In the vertical growth phase of the melanoma, the tumor cell invade 
downward into the deep dermis as an expensile mass and the time for this uh, is variable and unpredictable. The growth phase is marked by appearance of a nodule that correlates with the emergence of a tumor subclone within the with the within these uh, cells and uh, this subclone has got a metastatic potential the neurotization that is present in uh, nevi is absent in the melanoma case this photomicrograph is showing that there is a nodular aggregate uh, that is present in this uh, picture and these cells are infiltrating into the deep dermis. In vertical growth phase melanoma, there is a reduced number of uh, lymphocytes that infiltrate uh, in between these uh, melanocytes and uh, these are termed as tumor infiltrating lymphocytes compare this picture from this uh, photomicrograph that uh, shows the radial phase of the melanoma here the lymphocytic response is brisk while in vertical phase vertical growth phase of the melanoma the lymphocytic response is reduced the individual melanoma cells are larger than normal melanocyte or the cells of melanocytic nevi. The nuclei are large and irregular contour. Nuclei are prominent and uh, having eosinophilic uh, and uh, red color. The chromatin is distributed as clump at the periphery of the nuclear membrane. Uh, by the cytologic and other features, it is easy to differentiate between these uh, melanomas and the benign lesions of melanocytes. But uh, in uh, some condition that are showing equivocal characteristic, they are difficult to label as uh, benign or clear malignant tumors. So, these tumors are studied under the head of melanocytic tumor of uncertain malignant potential and uh, wide excision along with close follow-up is recommended for these lesions. This picture uh, is showing the morphological features of melanoma cells. Large cell irregular nucleus, the nuclei are prominent, nucleoli are prominent and the chromatin material is clumped. In the, at the periphery of the nuclear envelope and the insert is showing the uh, sentinel node that has stained by HMB45 and here it is showing a small cluster of the melanoma cell. The presence of even small number of uh, melanoma cell in the regional node marks a poor prognosis but uh, risk of metastasis is usually done by use of uh, prognostic models. One of the prognostic model for melanoma is uh, it includes these prognostic criteria, tumor depth of invasion that is Breslow thickness, number of mitosis, evidence of tumor recreation that is due to host immune response, ulceration of the overlying skin, presence of uh, tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, location of the tumor, whether it is located in, on the central body or located or, or at the periphery. The determinants that are associated with good prognosis are a thinner tumor, the mitosis that is less than one per millimeter square, brisk tumor infiltration by lymphocytes, absence of regression, and lack of ulceration. This photomicrograph uh, is showing the sentinel node that is, uh, that is uh, stained by HMB45, the specific stain for the melanoma cells, and uh, this is showing that uh, there is a nest of uh, the melanoma uh, cells in, invading the 
lymph node. So sentinel lymph node biopsy is also another uh, criteria for pro uh, prognosis for the melanoma. So the degree of involvement and the total number of the in lymph nodes that are involved in the melanoma, they correlate well with the overall survival of the patient. This video started with the phrase that melanoma is uh, one of the deadly cancer in the adults. So its early recognition and complete excision is uh, essential and uh, the usual symptoms for melanoma uh, are itching and pain. However, it may remain asymptomatic. The size of the lesion is about uh, or more than 10 cm at the time of diagnosis often and the signs uh, of the melanoma changes in color, size or shape of a pigmented lesion and uh, it is commonly uh, denoted by five warning signs A, B, C, D, E of melanoma. The A stands for asymmetry, irregular borders, color that is variegated, diameter that is increasing and evolution or changes over time especially if it is rapid. The superficial spreading melanoma uh, follows a history of intermittent sun exposure and sunburn. The borders are slightly elevated and palpable and the pigment is variable and haphazard. Some parts are black or dark brown, some area may be light brown or mixed with pink or blue color and uh, some lesions are purely dark brown in color. The warning signs are classic A, B, C, D, E uh, characteristics for melanoma that is the asymmetry of the shape, border that is irregular, color that is very variable and showing variation and the diameter that is more than 6 millimeter and uh, the E stands for elevation or evolution over time so, and uh, there is changing in the uh, appearance of this uh, uh, tumor or this lesion, there is itching in the lesion, size increases, there is darkening of the lesion, there is bleeding from this lesion or oozing from the lesion. Any uh, of the change that occurs in such type of the lesion should be evaluated for an excisional biopsy. The 10% of the melanoma are nodular melanoma and uh, these nodular melanoma bypass the stepwise tumor progression that we have seen that first there is a radial growth phase and then there is a start of the uh, vertical growth phase. Here the malignant characteristic uh, starts at an issue and there is no radial growth phase. Uh, grossly there is circumscribed elevated destroidal nodule and uh, the nodule of this cell grow in expensile fashion in the dermis as is uh, evident by this uh, photomicrograph. The tumor cells in this uh, histopathological appearance of malignant melanoma nodular type, they, these tumor cells are uh, down into the uh, vertical phase directly. There is no radial growth that is present lateral to this uh, nodule and uh, the nodule is uh, going down in an expensile manner into the papillary dermis and distorting the reticular dermis also. And uh, around this uh, expensile growth, there is no evidence of radial phase for this nodular melanoma. Most of these uh, nodular melanoma, they lack ABCD criteria that uh, we have seen earlier and may be advanced in thickness and uh, at the time of diagnosis and uh, thus at high risk of metastasis at the time of diagnosis. 
Despite being small in diameter, symmetric and uh, homogeneous in color, they uh, have increased tendency to metastasize the nodular melanomas. Lentigo maligna melanoma is also termed as Hutchinson's uh, melanotic freckle and uh, it is a large pigmented macule that occurs on uh, sun exposed damaged area especially on the face or on the dorsum of the hand. It is a lesion of uh, exclusively of fair skinned elderly whites with a history of outdoor works and uh, it is linked with the chronic ultraviolet light exposure. The mutations that are seen in this lentigo maligna melanoma are NRAS and receptor tyrosine kinase mutations. Grossly, it is a flat, irregular, black brown patch on the face or dorsum of the hand. Histologically, the cells of the radial growth phase are predominant in the basal layer of the epidermis and here they form contiguous rows of atypical single melanocyte while some of the nest also formed and these hang down into the papillary dermis. These cells are smaller and less pigmented than those of superficial spreading melanoma and there is effacement of rated edges also present. The epidermis is also thinned out. While in the dermis, there is modest lymphocytic infiltrate and uh, solar degeneration of the connective tissue is uh, also seen. This photomicrograph is showing the lentigo maligna melanoma histopathological appearance and here the these atypical melanoma cells are limited to the basal layer of the epidermis and here they are present at the dermoepidermal junction. This is the gross appearance of the radial and vertical growth uh, phases in uh, lentigo malignant melanoma and uh, the lesion is one centimeter in diameter. The cell in vertical growth phase are spindle shaped and occasionally they provoke a connective tissue response to form a firm plaque that is termed as desmoplastic melanoma and uh, it is very difficult to differentiate these sort of melanomas from a scar and neuroma. The cells of the melanomas and especially the lentigo maligna melanoma and other lentigenous melanomas they tend to grow along small nerves this this uh, characteristic is termed as neurotropism the acral lentigenous melanoma is the most common form of melanoma in dark skinned people it occurs on palm, sole and subungal region. Commonly seen mutations in this type of melanoma are increased copy number and abnormalities or mutations of cyclin D. The radial growth phase of the melanoma, acral lentigenous melanoma, shows an irregular brown to black patch that covers a part of the palm or sole or that arise under the nail, usually on the thumb or great toe. The histological picture of this melanoma, the histology shows the intraepithelial or intraepidermal radial growth and uh, atypical melanocytes are present along the dermoepidermal junction and uh, small nest that is marked by this arrow of atypical melanocyte is also present in the dermis. 
The tumor cells are usually confined to the basal layer of the epidermis and they tend to maintain long dendrites and uh, lymphocytic infiltrate is brisk and lichenoid as is seen in this uh, photomicrograph. This is the histopathological appearance of acral lentiginous melanoma. Here the characteristic of uh, uh, melanocytes or malignant melanoma cells are shown. These malignant melanoma cells are confined to the upper layer of the epidermis and they have got large prominent dendrites and uh, they are confined to the basal layer of the epidermis and also there is prominent brown color and this prominent brown color is due to presence of numerous melanosomes. They are uh, present in these uh, the vertical phase of the acral lentiginous melanoma is similar to lentigo malignant melanoma and there is a spindle cell presence, desmoplasia and neurotropism. This uh, picture, this gross picture is showing that there is a primary lesion of the heel and uh, this uh, yellow line is showing that this is the radial growth phase of this uh, acral lentiginous melanoma. In the vertical phase, there is the development of this nodule and uh, this nodule is uh, showing the or this elevated portion is uh, indicating the vertical growth phase. The nodule that is present at the instep is uh, a metastatic lesion. Down in this histopathology appearance of uh, the acral lentiginous melanoma vertical growth phase is uh, showing the atypical dermal melanocytes that are filling and expanding the papillary dermis. In this photomicrograph, there are uh, this photomicrograph of malignant melanoma and showing vertical growth phase. Here, numerous tumor infiltrating lymphocytes are arranged among individual tumor cells. The metastatic melanoma arise from melanocytes of the vertical growth phase of the uh, any form of the melanoma. They first go to regional lymph node and uh, in a matter of time, the hematogenous spread is also encountered. Dormancy is another phenomenon that is associated with melano melanomas or malignant melanoma cells. They, after invasion to other tissue uh, and uh, they have tendency to affect or invade any body tissue, they may remain dormant over there and clinically undetectable for a longer period of the time, even after successful excision of the primary melanoma and they re reappear after years of excision of the primary tumor. The staging and prognosis of melanoma. The prognosis of melanoma is based on tumor thickness that is Breslow's thickness and uh, it is the strongest and single most prognostic variable for stage 1 and 2 and uh, the thickness is measured, the Breslow's thickness is measured from the most superficial aspect of the stratum granulosum to the point of maximum thickness and outcome is predicted by accuracy uh, by dividing tumors based on thickness. The low risk melanomas are considered 0.7 millimeter to 1 centimeter. If uh, the melanomas are less than 1 millimeter in thickness, there is 83 to 88 percent survival chance and if it, it is 1 to 2 millimeter in thickness it the survival is 64 to 79 percent if the thickness is uh, 2 to 4 millimeter the survival decreases it to 51 to 64 percent and if the tumor is more than 4 millimeter in size the survival is 32 to 54 millimeter uh, percent. Ulceration is another uh, 
prognostic feature and uh, it is associated with survival rate. If the tumor has got ulceration, there is 66% survival chances while if there is no it become excellent in prognosis and the prognosis is 92%. Ulceration is also a stage modifier in AJCC system of staging and uh, when it, this ulceration is present, it uh, raises lesion to next stage in each thickness groups. Another prognostic indicator is dermal mitotic rate and uh, the survival is worse if the mitotic rate is increased. If there is no mitosis, 99% five-year survival. And if there is 0.1 to 6 uh, mitosis per millimeter square millimeter, it, uh, in, it decreases to 85%. While if the mitosis is more than 6 per millimeter square, the survival decreases to 68%. The mitogenicity, that is the presence of any mitosis in the dermis, uh, is a strong indicator of recurrence. Also, the mitosis is a stage modifier of stage 1. Another prognostic indicator is uh, interaction of lymphocyte with tumor cells in the vertical growth phase. The tumor cells uh, are penetrated and disrupted by the lymphocytic infiltrate and they frequently form rosette around the tumor cells. This is termed as infiltrative pattern. While the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes are present throughout the vertical growth phase or across the entire base of the vertical growth phase, this is termed as brisk pattern of the lymphocytic infiltrate. The more prevalent the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes, the better is the prognosis. The upper photomicrograph is showing a vertical growth phase and the host response consists of lymphocytes that are uh, infiltrating amid the melanocytes or these are tumor infiltrating uh, lymphocytes while the lower picture that is a high power view it is showing that in, in the vertical growth phase there are numerous uh, tails or tumor infiltrating lymphocytes they are arranged among individual tumor cells location of the tumor is another prognostic indicator and uh, melanoma of the extremities have a better prognosis than the melanoma of head neck or trunk Sole of the feet and subungual region have a prognosis that is similar or worse than axial lesion and uh, women have got a better prognosis for each thickness and each site of the melanoma. Uh, for example, for the, the axial melanoma of 0.8 to 1 millimeter thickness, the 10 year survival in women is 90% while for men it is 60%. The regression is another uh, indicator and uh, the spontaneous regression in a radial growth phase component is indicated by color change to blue-white or white. Histologically, there is widened papillary dermis that contains melanophages and lymphocytic infiltrate with no melanoma cells in the epidermis uh, overlying these uh, dermal changes but uh, prognostic significance of this partial regression is still unclear. There are some studies that still show that this, is, this has got worse prognosis, so this issue has not been settled as yet. The level of invasion is another uh, indicator and Clark level system describe the degree of tumor penetration within the anatomic layer of the skin. This uh, Clark level is not as much accurate as the tumor thickness in predicting the risk of metastasis and this Clark level of uh, invasion is not uh, included in AJC system of staging. However, it has got uh, limited 
prognostic significance in some cases. The level 1 is considered when the tumor cell entirely above the basement membrane and uh, it is called level 2 when invasive cells are present only in the papillary dermis without filling or expanding in the radial growth phase. Level 3, the tumor entered the vertical growth phase and impinges on the reticular dermis forming a small expansile nodule that expand and fill the papillary dermis. In level 4, the tumor cell invade between the collagen bundles of the reticular dermis. In level 5, tumor extend into the subcutaneous fat. The lymphatic invasion has not been included in the prognostic models because it is rarely seen in routine sections of histopathology. But uh, recently it is, it is uh, claimed that lymphatic invasion may be more common than previously thought when enhanced detection techniques are used and uh, it is proposed that it is prognostically significant. Now coming to the staging of melanoma, staging is the most important single factor that influences a patient's survival and metastasis to lymph node is now determined routinely by sentinel lymph node biopsy. As we know the sentinel lymph node is the first node to which the, uh, the lymph from a particular area goes first. And uh, the survival decreases 40% if the lymph node is involved. The 10 year survival for the melanoma is 40% if one node is involved. If the 2 to 4 nodes are involved, it decreases to 25%. If more than 4 nodes are involved, it decreases to 15%. The T is for tumor thickness, presence of ulceration and mitogenicity. The N denotes the positivity of the node, presence of micro or macro metastasis and M stands for metastasis. This is the schema for the staging of malignant melanoma. All three, the T, no, tumor, node and metastasis are described in this schema. The T1 to T4 are divided on the basis of the size of the tumor thickness and this thickness is from less than or 1 millimeter to more than 4 millimeter while each of this T is further categorized into A and B on the basis of presence or absence of ulceration. The mitosis is considered in stage 1 T1 and in T1 A is less is the tumor that is less than one millimeter and it contains less than one square millimeter uh, microsis, mitosis while the T1b is the tumor that is ulcerated and is uh, having more than one square millimeter mitosis while the node is showing that there is no nodal metastasis and one denotes one lymph node involvement with micro or macro metastasis two to three lymph node involvement are considered as n2 and further divided into a and b and c on the basis of micro metastasis macro metastasis or satellite lesion without metastatic node and 3 is uh, the tumor that has uh, invaded 4 or more lymph nodes or in transit metastasis or satellite lesions with any number of metastatic load. The M0, there is no uh, organ metastasis while in M1 there is a skin subcutaneous or nodal uh, metastasis 
and uh, M2 lung metastasis and M3 all other visceral metastasis from uh, serum LDH is also considered in the staging system it is elevated in M3 while not in the M0 to M2 this is simplified diagram for uh, staging of the melanoma the melanoma that is confined to the epidermal region of the skin is stage uh, 0 while the localized disease and uh, it is affecting only skin and it is very thin it is the stage 1 the stage 2 melanoma is the localized disease that is thicker than a stage 1 while a stage 3 spreads to local lymph node a stage 4 spreads to other organs now for the margin excision the recommendation is 5 millimeter for in situ melanoma while for tumor thickness that has got less than 1 millimeter thick 1 centimeter margin excision is recommended if the tumor thickness is more than 1 millimeter or the Clark level is 4 2 centimeter margin excision is recommended sentinel lymph node sampling is recommended when the tumor thickness is more than 1 millimeter and ulceration or mitogenicity is present for metastatic diseases uh, B, for metastatic disease, the BRAF inhibitors are used and immunomodulatory drugs such as uh, CTLA-4 or cytotoxic T lymphocyte antigen 4 and uh, programmed death one antibodies are also used. The melanoma are resistant to conventional chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, recall this illustration from the pathogenesis of the melanoma. Now, various uh, targeted therapies are available for to act on the specific point of the this uh, schema to control uh, the aberration of proliferation and survival along with the immunomodulators. This table is uh, describing the distinguishing feature of benign mole and malignant melanoma. The, on the basis of clinical features, the benign mole are symmetrical, well demarcated, uniformly pigmented and smaller than 6 mm, while the malignant mole melanoma follow the ABCD uh, rule. They are asymmetric. Their border is irregular, color change is frequent, and uh, diameter is more than 6 mm. The common location for benign mole is the skin of the face and mucosa, while the malignant melanoma is located on the skin, mucosa of the nose, bowel, anal region, or uvea of the eye, also in the meninges. On histopathology, the architecture of the mole is uh, presence of nest of the cell, while in malignant melanoma, it has got various patterns, solid sheets, alveolar pattern, nesting of the cell, or island of the cell. The cellular morphology in a benign mole is uniform and they look like nevus cell, while in malignant melanoma, the malignant cells show atypia, mitosis and prominence of the nucleoli. The melanin pig pigment in benign mole is irregular and present as coarse clumps while in malignant melanoma the melanin pigment is present in the form of fine granules and it is uniformly distributed. Inflammation may or may not be present in benign mole while uh, it is often present in malignant melanoma. The benign mole remains confined and it has got cosmetic problem only while the malignant melanoma spreads hematogenously or through lymphatics.